All right, um, ladies and gentlemen, when we're going into graphing standard form, a couple of things that I worked in with Mary and got, at least got started with was identifying your A, B, and C. All right? So the first thing I would say to definitely do is to check in, find the values of what A is, what B is, and what C is. Now remember, A is going to be the coefficients of your x squared term, which in this case is going to be 1. Please not right now. Please not right now. Find another time. Just don't be open to that right now. Just after I'm done going over this? OK, thank you. Um, B is going to be the coefficient of your linear term, um, which is going to be, in this case, which is negative 3. And C is going to equal our constant, which in this case is 1. Now, um, what we were talking about going through this, the first thing we want to do is identify what the axis symmetry is. Now, remember, the axis symmetry is going to be your vertical line. And the formula we have for that is x equals opposite of b divided by 2a. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do in this case is plug in those values for b and a. So the opposite of b is positive 3 divided by 2 times 1. So our axis symmetry is 3 halves. If you guys were to convert this to a decimal in your head, you should know that, or plug in your calculator, that would be 1.5. So what I can do is go over, between 1.5 is between 1 and 2. So I can at least draw the axis of symmetry. Even if you don't like dealing with fractions, we can at least go through and draw that axis of symmetry. Does everybody see that? You can graph a fraction. You can graph where that fraction is. Now, yes, I do understand the difficult part now is identifying the vertex. Because what we talked about to identify the vertex was to plug in the x value and to find the y value. Because remember, the vertex is a coordinate point. It's an x and a y. So we have the x value is 3 halves. Now we need to figure out the y value. So to do that, I say y equals 3 halves squared minus 3 times 3 halves plus 1. Now, I know you guys do not like fractions, but ladies and gentlemen, we have talked about fraction operations in this class. 3 halves squared just means 3 squared over 2 squared, which is just going to leave us with 9 fourths. When we multiply a whole number times a fraction, we rewrite our whole number as a fraction. So negative 3 over 1 times 3 halves is we become negative 9 halves plus 1. Now we have three numbers, including two fractions, that we have to add. If you guys remember, when we add or subtract fractions, they have to have the same denominator, correct? So we look at these and we say, let's write this as 1 over 1 as a fraction. You guys can see that the common denominator is 4. Would everybody agree with me? So therefore, I'm going to want these to all have a common denominator of 4 so I can combine them. So what I'll do is I'll multiply this by 2 over 2 and this by 4 over 4. Wait, why do you do that? So because now, once we'll just see what happens when I rewrite it. I have 9 fourths minus 18 fourths plus 4 fourths. So you see by doing that, now they all have a denominator of 4. Now all i got to do is add and subtract the numerators. 9 minus 18 is negative 9, plus 4 is going to be a um, negative 5 fourths. So my vertex is 3 halves comma negative 5 fourths. And you'll be like, all right, that's kind of, you know, how are we going to graph that? Well, remember, 4 goes into 5 one time, right, and with a remainder of 1. So it's really, you could rewrite this as, negative 1 and 1 fourth. Or if you also had a calculator, it would be negative 1.25. So that is between 1 and 2. So I go over 3 halves, down <coughs> negative 1.25. All right? Why did you write in the middle of the chart? Why not? Because what I'm going to do, uh, you, could, you don't really have, it doesn't really matter. You can, I could put it anywhere, OK? The, what I, the reason why I put it in the middle of the chart is because now what we can do is, once we have the vertex, I want you guys to choose points either to the left or to the right. So what I, the reason why I put it in the middle is I'm trying to signify this is like in the middle. We want to choose points to the left and to the right. So should I choose, based on what I went over last class period, would you want to choose points to the left or to the right? To the right. I ch you can choose to the right. There's nothing wrong if you said right. I would choose to the left because I want to get them closer to 0. So what I would do is I would choose the points um, positive 1 and 0. All right? And 
So now, um, let's go ahead and see what those points would be. So now, all I simply do is I plug in those points. 1 squared is 1 minus 3 plus 1, so that's negative 1. Right? And then let's do 0. That's a little bit lower. y equals 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus 1. So what I want you guys to see is if you choose points now over, which would be like 2 and 3, these points are the same. They reflect. Yes. Yes, Jasmine. Yeah, I mean, it really does. As I mentioned, it really doesn't matter. The reason why I'm choosing it in the middle is what I'm trying to say is if you choose points to the left, right, which would be above it, all I want you to understand is these points reflect over the axis of symmetry. So whatever points you got to the left, you're going to have the same points to the right. Case in point, if I'm going over 1, over 1, up 0.25, then I'm going to go over 1, up 0.25. I'm gonna, if I'm going to go over 2, up 2.25, I'm going to go over 2, up 2.25. So I just want, I, sh I put it in the middle to say that whatever points you choose to the left or to the right, the exact same points are going to be on the right side because they reflect over the axis of symmetry. But if you don't want to represent it that way in your table, that's perfectly fine. You could easily just do a table with the vertex, two, two other points, and then just reflect them on your own. That's fine as well. Okay. But then that is what the graph would look like. Yes? Sure. Yes.